Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, it's a big privilege, a uh, great honor to participate in this uh, Congress. And, um, and I know I'm stressed for time. I'm going to steal a little bit more minutes, but anyway. Um, I have um, decided to, let's see if I can make this thing. Okay. Um, I hope you do not invite me again. And the reason is I'm going to be hard. Uh, that's my style. And uh, if you get offended and upset and do not invite me again, then I know I've done my job. That's, that's the way we, we work in SPMES, and uh, that's the way we've been doing uh, our uh, digital health agenda in the last few years. Um, I prepared the slides in three groups, just having a quick look at Greece and Portugal. We have a lot of things in common. Um, and, uh, and then looking a little bit at the European scene as well as some examples from our country, not to say we're better, but to say that it is possible to do a lot with difficult times. It is possible to move ahead with not that much money as the Dutch, for example, that have a millions strategy right now. Um, and, and, and I think that is useful and inspiring uh, for a country that has gone through hardships. I've been here a few times myself in, in previous years, um, and, and I, I don't claim to know or understand the problems and the challenges, but, but some of them are, of course, transversal to many countries, and, and then some of them are specific to Mediterranean countries. So I think you know this. I think you also know uh, that you have an issue with life expectancy. I always use life expectancy to talk about digital literacy. And in my country, one fourth of the population does not access the internet. And of course, that is the most old people. And then the question is, are we going to wait another 10 years until they die? Or are we going to digitalize our elderly people? And so we have an active program, for example, in SPMS on digital literacy. And we go with councils and municipalities um, to make sure that all citizens go digital. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to, to you more about that. Of course, you know you have these problems. This is an uh, economics and health policy conference, third day. So it's supposed to have gone through all of this. But the reason I'm putting this here is because there are tools online that one could use to solve partially some of these problems. One, one of them, actually, to link with previous speaker, because that's ethics in, in speaking in public, is uh, mortality rates. If you go digital, Portugal was one of the first countries in the world to have full compulsory mortality reporting. Um, so everyone that dies after January 14 has a digital death certification. And we, we update five minutes, every five minutes, an online portal on the mortality and, and so you can see things like heat waves and things like that. So even mortality, that seems such a so, sort of a non-interesting topic. It is a critical topic if you're devising policy. Therefore, having statistics up to the day is very critical. The other thing you know about your country, of course, these are statistics for your country, is that you have a problem with hypertension, with diabetes, with asthma. Uh, and I give you this because I'm going to give one example on diabetes on how we are dealing that with digital technology as an example of new ways of treating uh, the old problems. And we also know that the Troika years in Greece were not very nice to healthcare because your expenditure went down, it had to went down. I can also tell you that in our country, it also went down. We had an annual budget of 10 billion euros in the NHS. We went down to 4.8.5 billion euros and the health agency was the only agency that had an increase in the budget in the Troika years. And of course, we were not very esteemed by the hospitals because we, our budget was going up. But also, our savings were going up, both in procurement and in IT. So I'll tell you more about that later. So when you have health expenditure going up, that's when you have to speed on the IT. I have no doubt about this. And, um, and then, of course, I know you know this by now, but I think it's fun to know that Greece is all the way down or up or everywhere. I mean, if Hippocrates wasn't Greek, you wouldn't understand this graphic, right? Of course, you have the highest percentage of doctors in the planet. And that's not a bad thing as long as they work hard. 
That's how I look at these graphics. Also because Portugal is uh, third next after Greece. So it's not an issue, you know. It's just what do you do with your doctors? Having a lot of doctors is not a problem. It's what you do with them that's an issue. So you just have to IT your doctors, make them super robots, make them work uh, super hard. And that's what we do over home, and that's why they hate me. Anyway, this is the graphic for 2019, uh, recent report of the OECD. Um, you see that Portugal is not very different from Greece, you see. Uh, so we can share some learnings that I think are useful for the conversation today. Um, we also share the corner of the graphic, Greece leading, of course, uh, and then we have Austria and Portugal. Uh, funny enough, we're three countries, 10 million kind of countries, uh, and with an IT sector, as explained by another previous speaker to mine, that has something to share and something to learn from. And then, of course, we have Norway, which we have very little in common, uh, um, except they have a lot of money, uh, which is not the case for Portugal, for sure. Well, anyway, European context. We have a digital agenda. We have an e-government plan. You know, and normally, you know, I fly to Brussels every, maybe every two weeks. And I, I always tell my team when we come back to Portugal, now we stop the talk and let's do the work. And, and I respect the work we do in Brussels. We do need to do policy. We do need to do the talking. But at the end of the day, the power and the decision and the authority relies on the services you have developed to your citizens. You can write beautiful blueprints. You can write beautiful strategies. But if every year you're not devising something new, something new to your Minister of Health, something new to your citizens, an online service about sick leaves, uh, you know, booking online, um, finishing the vaccination card and sending your vaccination kids card to the, to the school as opposed to taking a paper one, uh, then there's no point doing the talking, no point doing the policy. Um, so we, 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 we say for a long time in Portugal, the best strategy is implementation, uh, which is a very conflicting sentence. Anyway, there are tools to understand this European context. And I think countries like Portugal or Greece do benefit from being highly involved in the European scene. Uh, Greek has recently been more proactive in some of the projects, which is very good. Um, we have a so-called joint action. The joint action is a collective effort supported by EU funds where policy and e-health agencies come together to work under a multi-annual work program. This document is available online and you can read much more about the e-health action online. So I'm not going to bother you too much on this. Um, but just so you understand, it also links, this multi-annual work plan also links with the European Commission a communication on digital uh, health that was published on the 25th of April 18. I, I love this day. You should know that 25th of April is Freedom Day in Portugal, is when we kicked off our uh, dictatorship regime in 76. And it is also, so we call it the day of the revolution, and it is also the day where I took office in SPMS more than six years and a half ago. So it's also the day of the revolution for digital health. And I'm very proud to be the president of SPMES for more than six years and a half. Two governments, right wing, left wing, four ministers, five secretaries of state. So you need continuity in the strategy and strength in the agency. It's very simple words. Continuity in the strategy, strength in the agency. That's what you need. And then the technicians, they do the rest. Well, as long as you pay them enough. They're always demanding more salaries like the doctors. But anyway, there's the only two things IT people have in common with doctors. You know, they want more money and they are able to do anything they dream of. It's very simple. That's how you make them together, like each other. Anyway, so this is the multi annual work plan. We're talking about telehealth, mobile health. We're also discussing topics like big data. There's going to be a very important workshop in Lisbon on the 25th or 22nd, uh, 21st and 22nd of January this uh, coming year, where we are going to bundle together nations' strategies, but also the European vision for the so-called European health data space. Um, and, of course, this joint action brings together different countries to discuss, and Greece is part of this uh, effort, um, also um, working together with us on two areas, interoperability and cybersecurity. 
Um, so I'm going to jump this to, to tell you on the e-health network level, we are in the eighth year of the e-health network. The e-health network is the policy body where we get together to discuss these common topics and make decisions on guidelines like the patient summary, the e-prescription guideline, but more, since I am the co-chair now of representing member states, we have expanded our discussions to topics like cybersecurity. We created the cybersecurity health group, um, things like digital identification and recommendations to member states on how to organize their national digital health networks, the way these, all these agencies should be plugged together in, in a country. So this is cybersecurity uh, for Portugal. So, Beneath, we have the public sector uh, responsible for cybersecurity. Then we have, uh, that's why it's in Portuguese. Then we have the GACs, which is the, the group together with private sector companies, uh, pharma, pharmacies, uh, and, and medical associations, physicians, pharmacists, dentists, where we call the group to follow up on cybersecurity. Then we have the National Council for Cybersecurity, and then Portugal has organized together with European partners, the European Cybersecurity Health Group that officially started uh, three weeks ago, it has the first kickoff workshop, informal workshop in October in Lisbon. And at the Global Digital Health Partnership, we have created and we are now chairing the cybersecurity working stream. Now, I told you about a strong agency, SPMS, what we call the Google of Portugal, because we copied the letters. And, and my suggestion is do not use big companies uh, like US. Copy them and make one. That's what we believe. So we don't believe in sending all the Portuguese data to Google, like the UK did, and now they're having a problem with their citizens. Because citizens don't like the idea of having big data and analytics on their data without them understanding what it is. So in order to suffice and to be ready for the change, you do need a strong agency. This is an 800 staff company, public company, maintained by the Ministry of Health and Finance, and it's aimed to do pro public procurement as well as IT for the Ministry of Health. It is the only agency in Europe that gets together IT and procurement. And it is very obvious why you would do that. Because you wanna buy the best IT, you wanna use the IT to buy the best pills. You wanna control the procurement of medicines, you wanna make sure patients are getting the prescriptions right. So you clock together devices, medication, IT, material, and then of course you clock together the health data and you check balances. So it is based in Lisbon and Oporto. If everyone wants to visit, you're welcome to come. And what is the role of the government uh, on digital citizen engagement? And now let me share with you a few examples from Portugal, as I said, as illustrations of possibilities, not as some things you should do, because I honestly don't know. Uh, well, I, I think I know what you, you, you ought uh, to definitely be doing in a 10 million sized country uh, with the challenges that you have, uh, but that's for another conversation, um, because we do need to understand the priorities and the, and the quick wins. I am in favor of quick wins. I love long-term strategizing for a few, hours in the week. But then the rest of my week is spent with my people to really solve practical topics and devise practical solutions. So Portugal was the fifth country in Europe to launch a patient portal. Patient portals are key to establishing a relationship. Countries 10 million like ours should have only one portal, publicly available, free for use, that clogs and concentrates all healthcare data. This is what I believe, this is what I designed, this is what we launched in 2012. Before connecting the hospitals and the professionals, we connected the citizens. And this was of course a political move, but a very strategic one at the time. Right now, unfortunately, we don't have all citizens registered yet, which is not an issue because in Portugal, we can use the national platform to exchange image labs, any hospital or primary care data, even if the citizen is not registered, it's called the opt out system. If he wants to say no, then he has to go online and say no to this. So this is, this is the, the, the website, vaccination card, and so on. Well, I'm going to give you one example 
So you can do many, many things on this portal. But I'm just going to give you one example of the diabetes risk calculator. As an example of a problem, 12% uh, of the Portuguese have diabetes, and it is obvious why. After Greece, that has the best food in the world, Portugal ranks second, right? So, of course, Portuguese love to eat, and if they eat a lot, they tend to get diabetes. So, we have a risk calculator. If you follow these questions as a citizen, you are invited to authorize us, and this is very important. We use a lot of consents, and we ask people, would you be okay that we book an appointment for you to check if you really are diabetic? Those that say yes, and this is the statistics for this year so far, those that say yes, they come to a clinic, public clinic, we screen them for diabetes, and you can see the numbers. Out of 6,000 people, 3,000 were at high risk, 700 have had the appointment already, and 26 citizens have been diagnosed of diabetes that did not know they were diabetics. 10 of them are already taking medication. This is to say that the cost of this medication is equal to one of these patients having come into a clinic with an acute presentation of diabetes. This is where you save the money to invest in IT. And, and this is a, an example. This is a very simple example. And there's no reason you should buy Babylon software or you should uh, ride on uh, Amazon software. Do your own. And the reason is because you store all this data in the public sector and then you can use this data to mine the data and do mine, mining of the data. I'm going to be very quick on this just to say that we use in Portugal the concept of citizen life cycle where we map all e-health offering but also other sectors, e-justice, all the e-government is organized through the citizen life cycle. This allows the alignment of digital health, digital justice, digital whatever. And this is a very ways, uh, easy way to represent the things. We have in Europe created a mechanism to exchange e-prescriptions and patient summaries. I'm not going to go into details on this. I'm just going to say that in the case of Portugal, we build three connectors, three interoperability connectors using HL7, uh, uh, messages from the local, called LIGHT, Local Interoperability Gateway. This is a free-for-use, open-source tool that we offer all hospitals so that we can get the data from the hospitals up to the national level and then cross-border to Europe. Um, and then, of course, within Europe, we exchange. There's a lot of rules, a lot of audit, a lot of processes, and Portugal is right now offering patient summaries and e-prescription as country A and country B, so sending country and receiving country. Patient summary is a good challenge because it connects with the classification. You need to classify and document and structure all your data, including, for example, allergies. Most countries do not have an allergy catalog. Uh, we created an allergy catalog, and now we have a terminology center. It covers all catalogs, allergies, labs, and so on. We are also on SNOMED, and I think it's very useful uh, uh, to, to help the country. And this is then embedding the patient summary into the local software. This is the look and feel of our hospital software that is uh, um, offered and maintained by SPMES to the hospitals. And these are some of the countries that are in the project. Now, very quickly, uh, I told you already about our portal, uh, and I told you already that we are offering the services to the citizen, but the first thing we do to offer cross-border services is to ask consent. And in, in the portal, we manage many consents to gather information, to use information, to share information. It's very important to involve the patient. We also have devised the mobile solution. It is now almost half a million uh, population uses the, our mobile app and the idea is basically a wallet like the iPhone wallet and all the information is stored in different cards vaccination card immunization card uh, physical activity card which steps up the steps another trend that is happening is so-called dr. Google people go online because they feel sick they have the flu so we decided to fight this and we created our own website with a symptom checker so in Portugal, since January this year, we launched our own symptom checker. So people can go online and they can say, you know, I feel sick, I feel nausea, uh, I feel the flu. And we go through the algorithm. And if they need help, they call the hotline, which is also run by SPMS. So it converged the digital channel 
which was the online and on phone with the on uh, on the on the app with on phone. So the the, the 800 nurses that cover 10 million people, if they feel sick, work for us alongside the teams that develop the websites. And this uh, unification, it's called omnichannel, is critical if you want to devise a really good system, but also it is critical if you want to be leading on AI. And you should lead on AI, public sector should lead on AI, not private sector, we believe. And how, I'm almost finishing, uh, by getting the data from the citizens and then utilizing that data. And of course the data stays in, in, in the phones today and citizens love the phones. You need a national strategy. Uh, ours is online, is in English, is available for discussion and for, for taking ideas on. Uh, I'll just uh, jump these slides because I don't have enough time just to show that uh, you know, this is the, the, the framework of our national strategy, ethics, governance, legislation, cybersecurity, telehealth, uh, workforce and education, and then the different verticals like registry, interoperability, robotics, AI, analytics, and so on. Uh, and then we'll match this strategy with the SDGs uh, from WHO to make sure we are addressing the real challenges of society and not what the technicians like. Technicians are great people, but they should be subject to one direction, which is better care. You should not do digital health because they love to do digital. You should do digital health because you need health. Uh, so uh, having a national telehealth center is a good idea. We have one over three years now. It is very good to concentrate all your telehealth expertise, technologies, experiences, best practices. Um, and then to conclude, and just show you um, on primary care, having BI solution on top of all the data is only possible because all the primary care doctors use IT. That is the same software and it is concentrated, uh, the data on a big national uh, repository. And then of course, having a strategy for AI that is targeting challenges. For example, we have an AI uh, strategy that is looking at things like, for example, um, inadequate antibiotic prescription. Portugal and Greece are, are very bad on this uh, together. So we have a project on this. We have another project on emergency room admissions. We are the first country in the world with the highest number of uh, emergency room admissions per capita. So we have an AI project looking at why do people go to the AI and uh, to the emergency room and teledermatology and then data donation. And with this, I want to conclude. This is my final slide some tips, some suggestions, concentrate data and information about the system. So data spaces, big data for the system to be properly managed for policymakers to have real time data, but also concentrate information for the citizen. It is not fair to create solutions, at least in our type of countries, where the citizen will have a portal and he's the one gathering the data from every provider. Citizens are not capable to do that in most cases. Uh, so I think governments have a role there. Cross-border care, primary care, hospital care, and self-care are a continuity of care. It's not separate. So we know that. So our solutions need to look at that. Mobile, private, and secure by design. It's easy to talk about privacy by design. So why not talk about mobile by design? No one wants to use desktops anymore. No one carries laptops anymore. People carry their phones next to their hearts. So that's where IT for health should be right next to the heart, right? I mean, we carry this thing one centimeter away from the heart. So if you have digital in your heart and close to your heart, it's at your heart. Informed policies and new generation of digital health. Thank you very much, sorry for the delay.